Are you sitting comfortably? We know a good chair is hard to find. Maybe you're watching this on your phone while you lie in bed. Or maybe you're watching at your desk, sitting in an office chair. Maybe you're even watching it while you're in the bathroom. It's fine, we're not here to judge. For our money, you just can't beat a nice, classic wooden chair with soft leather upholstery. Call us old-fashioned, but some things just never go out of style. Take a chair like SCP-1609, for example. This fine piece of mahogany was once a chair that simply couldn't be beat in its quest to bring its users a little dose of comfort and refinement in their daily life. Tell us, have you ever been on your feet all day, just walking and walking and walking, and at a certain point you're just begging for a nice comfy chair that'll let you take the weight off your feet for a little while? You would have been SCP-1609's favorite kind of person. After all, it was the only chair that literally sought out weary travelers, and even did you the courtesy of tucking itself in. That's not a metaphor either. SCP-1609 could literally teleport to nearby people who needed to sit down and didn't have a chair to fulfill that desire. It was nothing but a nice, helpful anomaly that wanted to help people rest when they needed it most. The more observant members of you have noticed that we've been using the past tense so far. That's because while SCP-1609 is still an active anomaly, it isn't a chair anymore. And this transformation wasn't something that SCP-1609 planned, anticipated, or even wanted. The story of 1609's transformation even strikes to the core of one of the Foundation's oldest and most bitterly held rivalries with another group of interest. It's the tale of how a helpful piece of anomalous furniture became a paranoid killer. But first we need to talk about containment procedures. Like a word you see so often that it starts to lose meaning, containment and specific containment procedures are concepts so integral to the very existence of the SCP Foundation that it is easy to overlook or forget about them. They're one of the three core pillars of the Foundation's mission statement. Secure. Contain. Protect. Because of the centrality of containment to the Foundation's core principles, one of the most valuable roles on the SCP Foundation payroll is that of the Containment Specialist, a vast team of experts who work with researchers to figure out the best way to keep every anomaly contained, based on their unique abilities and attributes. They're zookeepers, archivists, guards, security and intelligence experts, magicians, practitioners of ritual, scientists, and so much more. In short, they're anything they need to be in order to adapt to the ever-evolving containment needs of the anomalies they keep under lock and key. And containment isn't easy. Aside from the rare safe class SCPs, which require incredibly minimal containment resources, the containment of most SCPs extracts some kind of cost, whether that be financial, time, effort, or in some particularly dark cases, human life. Some SCPs like SCP-974 and SCP-2845 require the sacrifice of human children to prevent worse fates befalling many others. Other SCPs, like the infamous SCP-231, require the Foundation to do horrifying things to the SCP itself to prevent it from manifesting some even more horrifying anomalous traits. And a third but equally inconvenient kind of SCP, like SCP-682 and SCP-076, require huge numbers of heavily armed guards with powerful weapons to keep their deadly prisoners locked away, often at a massive risk to their own lives. Containment isn't easy, but it's ultimately the very thing that makes the SCP Foundation the organization it is. If they were instead on a quest to kill and destroy every anomaly they could get their hands on, then they'd be the Global Occult Coalition, the UN's answer to the SCP Foundation that prefers to seek, disable, and destroy rather than secure, contain, and protect. It's the primary characteristic that differentiates these two titans of the anomalous world who regularly come to blows, and right at the heart of that difference is SCP-1609. As we mentioned earlier, SCP-1609 went through a transformation that changed everything, but the SCP Foundation never actually knew about the anomaly prior to that transformation taking place. It first came to their attention when it literally manifested within a containment cell in Storage Site-08, 
making the rare move of willingly submitting itself to the Foundation containment. But what showed up in that cell certainly wasn't a chair. When 1609 appeared, all it looked like was a pile of trash, specifically splinters, wood chippings, furniture nails, and scraps of bleached leather and fabric. Anything that suddenly infiltrates a secure Foundation containment site is cause for concern, even a bunch of wood scraps. So the site director sent in an armed guard to investigate the mysterious pile of debris. Researchers watching over a surveillance feed were surprised when the guard suddenly entered a state of heightened distress. He fell to his knees, coughing and spluttering until he expelled a considerable amount of blood from his mouth and nose. He then collapsed on the ground next to the pile of debris, dead. An investigation following this incident found that the guard had died after a sudden influx of jagged metal and wood had teleported inside of him, tearing his lungs apart from the inside and causing the guard to die a painful and horrific death. Naturally, the site personnel were somewhat concerned by this development. They sent in a D-Class to investigate further, but were surprised to find that the D-Class in question was somehow completely fine. The pile of debris that would soon be designated SCP-1609 made no attempt to harm the D-Class as it had the guard, and finding out why this was the case came as a side effect of figuring out exactly what had happened to SCP-1609. Through a rigorous investigation involving more than one secret Foundation mole, they discovered that SCP-1609 had previously been in the possession of, you guessed it, the Global Occult Coalition. Back then, it was just a helpful chair you once knew and loved, until the GOC had the bright idea of forcing it into a wood chipper in order to destroy it due to its connection to someone called the Carpenter. But all the GOC's attempt actually succeeded in doing was altering its form and completely changing its personality. To put it in simple terms, SCP-1609 is now a pile of possibly sentient teleporting wood and metal chippings that suffers from a nasty case of PTSD. The incident with the wood chipper traumatized SCP-1609, and its anxiety is triggered by anything that reminds it of the GOC or the wood chipper incident. This includes wearing formal clothing, lab coats, protective clothing, jumpsuits, and particularly body armor, but also includes anyone carrying weapons, appearing outwardly aggressive using common GOC lingo, or even mentioning the GOC in SCP-1609's proximity. If any of this happens, it's extremely likely that SCP-1609 will resort to its only natural defense mechanism, which is teleporting its debris into the lungs of anyone it considers to be a threat. The guard had received this grisly punishment because his clothes, weapon, and overall manner caused SCP-1609 to regard him as a threat and react accordingly. You may think this is overkill on 1609's part, but if you were just trying to help out the chairless people of the world and someone fed you into a wood chipper, you'd probably be a little jumpy too. Since these early days, the Foundation has learned to apply a more tender touch when it comes to dealing with SCP-1609, and the brilliant containment specialists even figured out a way to keep 1609 happily contained by placing it in a flower bed inside its containment chamber where its wood chips get to serve as mulch for a variety of flowers and plants. All attending researchers and guards dress in plain clothes and adopt a loose, pleasant attitude while inside. Whenever they're around, they make a point of saying how beautiful the flower bed is, so that the disfigured anomaly that only ever wanted to be helpful can still feel like it's doing something nice. Because of these containment procedures, breaches involving SCP-1609 have remained in the single digits. It is a perfect example of less really being more when it comes to containment. The head researcher on the SCP-1609 case, Dr. Sievert, released an internal document permanently affixed to the file like a kind of cautionary signpost. It's a clear expression of exasperation and rage at the actions of the Global Occult Coalition, reading, SCP-1609 represents a perfect example of the flaws inherent in the operating procedure of the GOC, and serves as a cautionary tale for any members of the Foundation who disagree with our practices on containing dangerous objects. Prior to the Coalition getting their hands on this, it was perfectly harmless. A chair which teleports to you when you need to see it is normal compared to most of the stuff that we deal with on a regular basis. When they put it through a wood chipper, it got hurt, scared, and angry, so it lashed out at them. By trying to protect the world by destroying it, they inadvertently made the situation a whole lot worse. 
SCP-1609 went from being harmless to deadly in the space of a few minutes because of the GOC, and we had to clean up the mess. Thankfully, SCP-1609 is pretty simple for us to deal with, so long as we don't have to do anything stupid around it. It won't fight back and it won't try to leave. Even if it does, it usually comes back, and I think I've worked out why. It came to us because it was afraid of the people who had hurt it. That's why it always comes back. It's afraid of the rest of the world now, and it's looking to us for protection. This is why we have special containment procedures instead of special destruction procedures. If you break something, it's broken forever. When you try to destroy an anomaly, you can't take back your mistakes. That's what SCP-1609 has to tell us. This is why we're right and the GOC is wrong, people. But of course, there are two sides to every story, and it's important to understand the GOC's perspective on this whole mess. To them, this has never been SCP-1609. It's KTE-0937 Velveteen, aka the Sixth Chair. It was labeled as the Sixth because for the GOC, this chair was merely one part of a wider investigation. It belonged to a six-piece furniture set created by a dangerous anomalous person of interest named the Carpenter for a classified customer. The GOC was able to intercept this deal and kill the Carpenter and his customer in the process. After that, all that was left was to eliminate the anomalous objects, and five of them were incinerated without incident. However, before they could do the same to the sixth chair, they experienced an incinerator malfunction. Rather than just waiting for the incinerator to be fixed, a member of GOC personnel decided to rush the job and run the chair through a wood chipper. It was at this point that its pieces first lashed out, invading the lungs of this negligent GOC member along with five others, killing them all. It was shortly after that that SCP-1609 manifested in Foundation containment. Much like Dr. Sievert did for the Foundation, Assistant Director Kipling, one of the GOC's Legion of Middle Managers, affixed a note to the profile of KTE-0937 Velveteen that reads, KTE-0937 Velveteen is an object lesson in the importance of following proper operating procedures. Due to the lack of vigilance by the agent on the scene, the object's threat level was escalated. The object itself was not successfully disposed of, and it has since fallen into the hands of a hostile agency. A single failure by a single operative resulted in the deaths of six. Remember this next time you think about cutting corners. And that's a good lesson for everyone. Whether you're trying to destroy an anomalous piece of furniture or keeping its remains happy so they don't try to kill you, cutting corners is always a fast track to failure. Now check out SCP Global Occult Coalition Explained and SCP-5000-Y The Full Story Compilation for more dramatic clashes between the Global Occult Coalition and the SCP Foundation.